Hi, this is the Cognitive Lifestyle Show with Veronique, and today my guest is Dr. Ron Levine, chiropractor. We are talking about one of our five senses, touch, which is unfortunately kind of disappearing, and we need it. We need it for health. We need it for bonding with other humans. We need it for survival, and we need it because it makes us happy. So you are the expert as a chiropractor. Not only is Dr. Ron Levine um, having a practice in Princeton, but also in New York. He understands the body very well because he has been a modern dancer and practiced other techniques right, that have to do with movement. He's also the creator and a pioneer of neurotactile therapy. We will talk about it later. But thank you so much for being on the show today, Dr. Thank, Levine. Thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. And before we start, you know, uh, getting into, you know, I want a little, yes. Contact. A contact. Start things off right. You know, let's get the energy flowing. The positive because hormones it makes it, flowing. Exactly. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I grew up in a very academically oriented family, and I was right up there with, you know, the smart Alec kids in high school. But along the way, I started to experience the importance of body movement and touch. And that became such an important motivator in my life that I've really devoted my entire professional career to promoting the use of touch and healing. So you became a chiropractor? So I studied chiropractic while keeping up with my studies of human movement. Mm -hmm. And um, how did you become a dancer? I took, while I was enrolled at the University of Michigan, I enrolled in an African dance class just on a whim. And they had live drumming. It was just the most exciting thing. And, it's, I, and I suddenly really, of course it was fun. Uh -huh. But it also resonated with me how important it was. So part of my message is that these movement and touch, things that are, are not often seen as elevated as abstract thought, are actually fundamental to who we are as human beings and are actually of great significance. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, this is the perfect segue to my first question, which is, what is the importance of touch? It's, you can't, it's so hard to say because it is so important. It's so embedded in who we are as people. It's so much embedded in our social relationships. It's embedded in how we construct the world. Touch is also the sense among the main senses that connects the inside with the outside, like vision and hearing. We're taking in information about the external world. But touch in the skin, that's that interface between who we are and our relationship with the world. Mm. And um, touch is so important that, you know, th the first thing when you have a baby, you know, as, as a mother, is the baby is, you know, in your arms because they need that touching, the mother, right? Absolutely, and in hospital, in uh, those ICU units for premature infants, they've now seen that they have to take these premature babies out and give them 30 or 45 minutes a day of touching, they'll gain 47% more weight mm. than the same premature infant not touched. Okay. So does touch impact our ability to learn, to heal, to lead a balanced life? Yes, so let's look at learning first of all. Yes. So some of the research on that is crystal clear. Like if a teacher t brushes uh, your arm or gives you a pat on the back in the class, you're going to be more engaged, you're going to be more engaged and feel more positive about the learning process. If a librarian touches your arm lightly as you're checking out the book, you're going to like the library more. You're more likely to come back. You're more likely to like the book that you just borrowed. So touch activates, also touch also activates your muscles so that it has a role to play in physical performance, not just in sports, but in even the activities of daily life. Your muscles are facilitated, they're strengthened just if, they're, if, they're, if touch is part of your experience. So it looks like the touch, they are like touch receptors on all our skin and cells. So it must activate like a flow of energy. I even read it's releasing oxytocin, which is the hormone of love and well-being. There, there is the, there's a hormonal effect. Like the skin is actually part of the endocrine system. 
-hmm. So there are the re release of these beneficial hormones that create social bonding. But also, in addition to looking at the receptors in the skin, there's different nerve receptors like light touch, firm touch, hot, cold, vibration. It's also how the experience of touch is integrated in the brain, which is really important. And that's also where the emotional and the social communication components of touch get filtered into the equation. Mm -hmm. So the real action is going on in the brain, not just in the skin itself. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting. So um, touch is prohibited more and more, right? We are in a society where touch can be misconstrued as a sexual advance or as a, you know, kind of coercive um, manner to force somebody. And there are more and more rules and trainings when you get to work in a new company about what you can do, what you can. So what's the impact of this? Because, you know, we're not allowed to touch anybody anymore. And touch is not just touching, right? It's also hugging giving a kiss or whatever. What, what's the impact of this? I think it, I personally feel it's tragic and that the pendulum has swung too far in mm -hmm. one direction. Now, of course, we don't want unwanted touch because so much of the experience of touch depends on our emotional expectation of that touch. Unwanted touch when is going to, it's not going to feel good. Even if it's, it's the same, has the same physical characteristics, the same depth, the same firmness. But if there's a negative emotional connotation, a person's gonna react negatively. Whereas if there's a positive, loving, supportive, sharing uh, uh, expectation, the same touch will have a, quite a different impact. So I feel that through the loss of touch in, con so here's an example. Uh, one, these, one scientist like was studying the behavior of people in social situations. Mm -hmm. Two friends meeting in a cafe just to have a cup of coffee, not romantically related, just two friends. Yeah. And we're measuring how often they touch each other. San Juan, Puerto Rico, 200 times an hour. Paris, France, 40 times an hour. New York City, twice an hour. Oh my God. So we're really living in a low touch culture and I think it leads to social isolation and also fear and uh, discomfort with other people. Which a disconnect, is a right? A disconnect. It's a huge social and you could even say political issue right now. I feel yeah, the pendulum is going too far. And then, well, it's, the question will come later, but then how do, we, how do we educate our kids? If we are not touchers, right? If you're in your 30s now, how are you going to educate your kids? Because um, I know that I'm a back scratcher and I have been scratching the back of my girls forever that was a ritual before they were going to sleep and they are no close to their 30s but they sit with still when they come home mommy has to scratch their back because it's That's like a so bonding sweet. it is very sweet but it's also it's like i think it gets them back to a connection with their mother and we are to the point now that people are hiring what what's called cuddlers or or um, professional there, there's cuddlers an app where you can enroll them, and by the way, it's very well paid, eighty to hundred dollar an hour. Uh, but the um, the the art of touching, right? Because you just said it earlier, you have light touch, soft touch. Um, is there a difference, and especially in your job as a chiropractor, between light touch and strong touch? Well, in my job, in my work, I do have to find the appropriate way to work with each individual patient. And there's where some of that person's beginning expectations comes in. Because if I have a patient who has experience with a deep sports massage, they realize that firm pressure, even though one could say, it, I don't like to use the word, even though it's a strong sensation, they welcome it because they know it's an opportunity to get more blood flow to their muscles and release their muscle tightness. Whereas other people may have a different expectation of what a firmer touch is. And for those people, I need to use a much lighter approach, which can be equally effective, actually. It's a sometimes case by less, case. It's a case by case, and sometimes less is more. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll see like the biggest, I hate to be stereotyped, the biggest bruiser kind of guy, yeah. and he's gonna actually respond to the most gentle touch. For whatever uh, reason. So do you have to set up expectation with your patients? I mean, especially if it's the first time they're going to see a chiropractor? 
That's a good idea. Pretty much what I do is I just act in my own professional manner and I explain the technique of what I'm going to do. And I let the idea of touch and its connotations be in the background. I don't say, now I'm going to touch you. Yeah, and yeah, you're gonna f yes, yeah. That to me is not right either. I'm in, on one level, I'm applying a loving, supportive, caring touch. And another level, I'm applying a technical, technically sophisticated intervention. And I want, to, I want my work to work on both of those levels. Mm -hmm. um, so the, um, what's the difference between, okay, you are, I could say, I could classify you as a toucher. Toucher. Because you are giving the gift of your hands, of yes. your healing hands yes. to your patients. But what's the, um, we, we always talk about the benefit of being touched. Yes. Physically, from your health perspective, emotionally. What is the benefit to you as the giver? That's you a, are giving. That's a good question. And I do have to say, I do have high job satisfaction. Yes. So there must be something to it. Yes. So for one thing, we know that some of the same hormone, beneficial hormones are released equally in oh. the toucher and the touchy, or the yes. passive touch versus active touch. Mm -hmm. We also know that if you look at just those receptors in the skin, many of the same receptors are stimulated in the toucher and the touchy. But if you start to look at the brain, now that's a different picture. And one of the reasons why is that for every action I take, if I move my arm, my brain already calculates in advance what it expects the location of my arm to be when the motion's completed. Yes. Then it just compares the real thing to the expectation and there's like an error control correction mechanism. And it's very sophisticated because you can have a much more subtle adjustment if you're just comparing these two pictures, mm -hmm. your expectation and your reality. So the same is true with touch. If I place my hand on somebody's spine, I already have in my mind an idea of like what I'm gonna feel, how the tissue, what's the temperature, the pliability of the tissues, and I can just try to pick up the differences between what I'm feeling and what my expectation was so that gives me a much more sophisticated and based on experience, a much more subtle ability to tell what's going on for that person. Mm -hmm. And uh, do, you, do you feel the energy? Do you feel the energy in the patient coming in? Do you feel the energy in the body? I'm, I'm getting at the more like, you know, Reiki type of, but right, uh, chiropractic is a science. But what about the, the, you know, the aura of energy? Do you feel it sometime or what's going on? I personally do not favor describing what it is I'm feeling by calling it energy. Because for me, that's a vague term that already means something else. It mm -hmm. already means, you know, electricity, magnetism, energy. So, but what I do feel that I'm feeling is the ease of mobility of the connective tissues. So the skin and the muscles and the ligaments and the tendons, do they glide freely? Do they flow? So I'm feeling motion flow. Okay, I see now, what you mean. Now, another person might call that energy, that's fine. You are unblocking restrictions, restrictions of connective and tissue so forth. motion yes. flow. Yes. yes. Now, another question I have, and it's true for a lot of professions where you have to touch. Like, by the way, I love to go to the hairdresser. It's a high touch experience. I love, you know, when they're washing my hair and I have a massage with the shampoo and then they're brushing it. I always feel like more relaxed. So um, I think some, I hope some of those professions are never gonna go away. And if there's a robot sometime, you know, doing my chiropractic or, you know, doing my hair. But I would miss the human connection. Absolutely. So where is she going with this? Well, my question is, um, what's the difference between I'm going to see you and you are going to give me a scientific service, a scientifically based service mm -hmm. as a chiropractor, but also I'm not talking about the placebo effect, but the touching effect. Yes. So what's the, the balance or the difference between those? That's a good question. because. 
everyone who touches for a living, the hairdresser, massage therapist, doctor of chiropractic, we all are able to convey a certain generic or general benefit just from the touch, just from the human interaction. But the more, so in my field, there's the added dimension of palpation, which is, the, it's like a diagnostic test. We're using touch to feel what's going on in the body, getting diagnostic information. And the more sophisticated I can have an anatomical model or a picture in my mind of what, what's beneath the surface, the more detailed and the more accurate that pal palpation information is going to be. So in addition to the general health benefits of touch, I'm also providing a specific therapeutic service, identifying those limitations of motion we were talking about, and finding a way to work around them, let the body release, coax them into responding. And a big part of that, it turns out, is also activity taking place in the brain. So we're always working on the skin-brain connection. Mm -hmm. So we spoke about your, your specialty earlier when I introduced, in, in fact, the, the neurotactile Neuro therapy. Yes. What is that? Well, I did not invent this. Okay, this is okay. a method that okay, has sorry. actually been... You're a pioneer. A, I'm a pioneer okay. or developer. Okay. This is a method that was developed by German physical therapists starting in 1929. It's been around a long time and it's never found widespread use in this country. It's, it's a specific type of therapeutic touch, therapeutic stroke. I use the tip of my finger, stimulating areas along the spine and throughout the whole body. And what it seems to do is rebalance the nervous system. It seems to rebalance the autonomic nervous system. That's that aspect of the nervous system that controls like automated functions, your breathing, your heart rate, Things we don't think about. Things we don't think about, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's remarkably effective and really underutilized. So. so can you use this neurotactile approach while you are delivering a chiropractic service on a patient? Well, I use it as a big part of my general, I mix and match different methods. Neurotactile therapy is one very important method I use, maybe more than any other one. But depending upon the person, I'll add it to with other methods as well. So you are stimulating the nerves. I'm stimulating the nerves. So a nerve could be lazy, for instance. A nerve could be distract. A nerve could be lazy. A nerve could be distracted. So let's say you sprain your ankle. Everybody sprained their ankle. Well, I, so you I, have an injury. I broke my ankle. Yeah. So you have all the you know the inflammation and all the fluid in there. That's one aspect of the injury. Mm -hmm. Another aspect is your brain is now distracted. Your brain is paying attention. Your brain is saying there's a problem here. And the brain also, to some degree, helps to maintain the inflammation. So as we're healing and calming the local ankle, we want to be also retraining the brain back towards health as well. To have optimal... Optimal healing and, and reintegrating the injured part. Also, you don't want to start like subtly restricting your motion of the ankle yeah. because your brain still thinks there's a problem. You want to reintegrate okay. that body part. You want, you want your brain to be in a winning position that yes. we are fixing the problem. That's interesting. Yes. Um, do you see a difference between men and women in expectations or in the way you have to treat them? Well, that's a good question too. So one group of research that has been done is just looking at those actual nerve receptors in the skin. What's the sensitivity of the different receptors? And there are certain classes of receptors that have been found to be more sensitive in women than in men. But once you go beyond just the receptors in the skin, and again, look at the activity in the brain, it gets much more complex. And social and emotional factors become paramount. So here's another experiment that was done. They tried to determine if two people who are strangers, if could, they could communicate, if one could communicate specific emotions to the other just with a sense of touch. So there'd be a screen between us and my arm would be reaching, maybe you'd be blindfolded. You would be touching my head Right, and I would I'd try to show grief okay. or joy or compassion, yeah. whatever. And it was remarkable how effective that emotional communication was. Actually, looking at somebody's facial expression, you can only really reliably read one or two types of emotion, really distinguish them. Through the sense of touch, you can distinguish six or seven distinct emotions reliably. Oh my 
gone. Do you, can you mention a couple? Grief, joy, contempt, compassion, anger, stress. fear, yeah. stress. So here's the here's what's also interesting though. There were a couple of areas where commu emotional communication through touch broke down. Women, when women were trying to communicate anger to a man, the man couldn't read it. <laughs> when a so, man, there's a lot yeah, you can think about yeah, with yeah, that, right? Yeah, let's not go there. Yes. <laughs> when a man was trying to communicate compassion to a woman, the woman couldn't read it. No, I it's find that maybe, fascinating. Yeah, maybe we have also some expectation, expectation. you know, about how people feel. Like or a how man to shouldn't have compassion. Feeling. Yes. <laughs> or maybe men don't know how to be compassionate. Well, we or are, whatever. yeah, very often we are blocked by our preconceived notions about what the other person is or what yes. the other person yes. is expecting, right? Yes. And you know, like in France, we kiss, we don't hug, and sometimes I forget about this and I right. go for a kiss and people are like, whoa! What is she trying to do? And you kiss do? on both cheeks, too. Yes, we are, or even three times, and then people are completely startled. Um, Interesting. But I'm, a, you know, yeah, the, um, I, was in, I was raised in a family uh, where touch has always been important. Uh, cuddling with my mother and cuddling with my, 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 my kids, but it looks like in some families where you don't cuddle, because it can be also uh, construed as weakness. Um, it, it, it carries in your life and then you have people who are like when then you try to touch them they are like wait 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 don't try to come here which I think is sad because the warmth of an embrace uh, from another human being is very important I have a little story that um, when I go to New York I very often like to distribute not all the time fresh socks or French fresh underwear to homeless people oh how wonderful well and one day I gave a pair of socks to a guy near Penn Station and I remember he said to me, I want to thank you. And he said, can I hold your hand? And I said, of course. And he had tears in his eyes and he said, you know, nobody wants to touch me. Well, and then I started to be emotional about it. Oh. But I was like, yes, you are alone in the street. Nobody's touching you. Um, and no, this leads me to, to say, where are we going in this world where we are scared of everything, but also with augmented reality, virtual reality, and I know this, this feels very well because of, you know, I have to market um, my, my, uh, my profession, mm -hmm. touch is disappearing, and to the point where you can live a life in total isolation in a dream of virtual reality. And this is very scary. What do you think about that? I'm convinced that we will, that we as a culture will rejoin our evolutionary history and many other cultures on planet Earth and once again incorporate a much higher degree of touch, interpersonal touch. It has to we come don't, back. We don't have a choice. It has to come back. It has we to have come to back. feel connected. We have to feel connected. And um, touch was invented for a reason, right? as much as hearing or viewing Absolutely. or whatever, your sight. Uh, what's the advice, are we getting to the end of the show, so I wanna make sure that we, we can talk a little bit more about you at the end, but what's the advice to parents? Um, well, I, as a parent, and now actually as a grandparent, I just have so much fun hugging, kissing, rolling around on the floor, letting the kids jump all over you in the bed. I mean, without, it's not like I'm advising parents what to do. It's like, what, what's the purpose of having this kid? You know that you just want to hug them and love them like all the time, right? Yes. So do it. Yeah, they care more about being hugged and loved than, than anything else. Than receiving a new toy or whatever. They want, they want to feel this connection Absolutely. with their parents. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and as you said earlier, a, a happy kid is also going to be better socially. Um, there are studies showing that if there is no touching or no human relationships and, and warmth in your life, you the chances are you will become a more violent child. Um, and, That's absolutely true. And w with the violence we see in a way in the world, it's really time. You know, if we could get people to hold hands more often, it makes a difference. Um, but um, yes, I mean, I know my kids will ask me sooner or later, 
what to do with their own, but we have to spend time hugging more. I mean, we need to have hugging therapy groups. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> now um, this was a very interesting conversation okay. with you today, Dr. Levine. And um, but I always ask uh, my guests at the end, you know, because we all have a profession. Everybody knows you are chiropractic doctor by now. Uh, what, what makes you different as a, as a chiropractor? Well, I have a lot of experience and compassion and smarts, and I have also experienced hands, so I'm much very able to determine relevant information from what's going on for you. And I combine that with my knowledge of body movement. Being a dancer, being, right? To work out a multi-dimensional or you could almost say a multidisciplinary approach to helping a person achieve and maintain health. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you on the show today. And uh, right now my body is in good shape, but if I need an adjustment, so let's hold hands again. <laughs> this was the Cognitive Lifestyle Show with Veronique. Have a wonderful day, a happy life, a healthy life. And don't forget to hug and kiss. I'm going to kiss my husband tonight. I'm going to pet my dog. I want to make sure I'm going to be lovey, 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 dovey the whole day. Have a wonderful day. Bye.